Hey guys, it's Kugli again with another ROM review and this time I've got the CyanogenMod Mod version 14.1 for the OnePlus 3, so stick tuned for that. So guys, uh, before 7.0 was even uh, ready for most most devices, Google has dropped the 7.1 OS for their Pixel lineup and it's ready for other, well, Nexus ROMs and uh, well, eventually it's made its way to the OnePlus 3 and a lot of other devices. So let's get started on that. Now 7.1, as I have been using this, is not a huge improvement over 7. Uh, there are quite a, a little bit of twe uh, tweaks here and there which is uh, which does give you a much better experience. I, I won't say much better, a slightly better experience than the 7.0. 7 so yeah if you've ever seen the Nogat series from uh, that is 7.0 you pretty much know how this is going to work. So let's get started now. First of all in the settings menu you can see that this is Cyanogen mod based so that is the uncompromised undiluted Cyanogen mod experience which you're going to get. Uh, Android version is 7 and it still has the same uh, Nogat uh, well easter egg. It does have the 7.1 moniker. It is Guava API level and this is the date of it. It does have the October patches which is well grant we, we actually take it granted for this now and the kernel is just Cyanogen mod and now the developer is Taker18 and he is one of the best developers out there for XD, in Onyx DA for this device so really really respect him. So now let's get started on the ROM now. First of all most of the daily stuff which you can use on this ROM is working. I didn't have any issues with most of the stuff here. Uh, it's been really really useful for me um, Wi-Fi works Bluetooth works I've been able to pair everything uh, NFC works uh, hotspot works mobile network works so you can see VLT is working for uh, geo so you if you are rocking a geo sim you will be able to use that uh, sim cards both of them work I've been using that in the display options you do have brightness level adaptive brightness live display now there is one bug, there are a lot of bugs actually and one of the bugs is the live display automatic mode if you set it to automatic night mode uh, it just reverts back to the normal mode and it doesn't really hold the setting so that's something there. Now this also twist for camera I have never been used to able to use this uh, I guess this is from the Moto series ROMs but I've not been able to use this lift to wake also and these settings do not uh, keep themselves if I go back and go in it just is disabled so I've not been able to use this and I'm going to include that in the bugs department because in the ambient display settings you do have ambient display so you do have pickup, hand wave and uh, pocket motion and that does work out I really appreciate that it is a working feature it does have prevent accidental wake up but it does not include the fingerprint scanner so that is going to be a Achilles heel for most people because fingerprint scanner in the pocket does get activated quite a lot of time draining battery so yeah it does have font size and display sizes uh, when device is in VR mode uh, I don't have a VR headset right now so I cannot test this uh, doesn't really do much right now I I think it needs we are connected it does have battery lights where you can customize all of this uh, it does have notification light also where you can customize all of these settings so that is really nice to see now the battery life battery life has been pretty good now I've already said this, uh, it is about the same as what you would expect out of a NOGAT based ROM. So battle life is a very good strong point of this ROM also, uh, which does sum up to be a very good daily driver experience but I will get to that later. Now in the button section you do have option to enable the on screen navigation but that does disable the uh, buttons, uh, you, you can enable that or disable that. It does have uh, hardware key customization also, power button for camera is working and I really appreciate that. There is option for double tapping the home button and recent button where you can customize these buttons, volume buttons customization is available for playback control and keyboard cursor control that I use all the time. Now, there is gesture options available and gesture is working uh, pretty well uh, you can see I have activated the flashlight it does work out really nicely I really appreciate these options now in the additional buttons you do have option to swap the uh, hardware buttons if you do 
don't want to use the normal OnePlus layout if you come from Samsung or something of the other. Uh, you do have the alert slider which is working which is really nice to see. Uh, I do use alert slider a lot uh, because I've been used to it and when I'm in college I do want my phone to be switched um, into silent and that is a really convenient way to do that. Now rest everything is basically what you would expect out of a Nokia at ROM. Nothing special in here. It does have privacy option and protected apps with privacy guard so yeah uh, you do have fingerprint scanner option available for that now there is also a status bar option where you can customize what all status bar icons appear so you can customize all of this you can enable auto rotate screen headset all of that can be also enabled you can see there is the auto rated icon up there in the status bar clock style can also be customized to any of these i have personally put up my personal right now uh, battery status style now this does not work properly uh, it is stuck in icon portrait uh, it is actually selected in circle but it doesn't show circle so yeah you will have to live with that battery percentage can be enabled but again it doesn't really work so your mileage may vary I, I don't think mileage will be varying it doesn't work now it does have quick pull down setting and uh, that is something which is debatable I don't like quick pull down I like smart pull down option which is available in CM13 ROM so I would uh, like to have that now there is another bug in this which uh, causes the cyanogen mod weather not to be able to update so the show weather which you will see in this one and the lock screen settings will not be working uh, that is going to be a work in progress I'm hoping that does work out uh, sooner than later but yeah brightness control is available where you can swipe on this and get the brightness to work so that is really cool show notification card is there and double tap to sleep is also there and that does work out really nicely now there is system UI tuner and if you have used the Sajan uh, 14 ROMs you know how this works there is uh, enable split screen swipe up gesture which is pretty cool from the overview menu and also power notification levels where you can customize each level for a application and uh, it will behave accordingly so yeah there is a sRGB mode which I don't really know why there is because that doesn't really do anything in the developers option uh, there's also root access and that is something which, is, which I really appreciate root access is available and I have been able to use all the titanium backup stuff that's really cool debug mode is available animations uh, enabler and uh, speed changer is available where you can customize that and pretty much it there isn't much new from the 7.0 versions which is uh, worth mentioning in this device so yeah so I guess that much is it in the settings menu. Let's go to the options now. I am using the bare minimum stuff in here because, well, it, I am not using this as my daily driver. And I will tell you why. Uh, there are a lot of situations where the, uh, the animations are choppy. As you can see, I just dropped it down. The animations are choppy. And when using the XGL Labs application also, it is really, really choppy when scrolling through uh, forums, different forums. So not going to be the best uh, daily driver at least in my opinion if that is going to be there so you can see it is still choppy uh, it's not as smooth as uh, any other ROMs which I've tested yet but again this is a first release and there is going to be fixes available and I am hoping there are a lot more fixes available and uh, yeah I hope that does work out now again there is this uh, cat Nico uh, which is basically the uh, Easter egg in no cat ROM so that is available and if you want to play around with cats you can do that so let's get to the camera application it does have the science mod camera and uh, I'm not entirely sure why it's not able to take auto HDR photos uh, because the other science mod cameras was able to do that it does have the full suit of stuff and it does even have the chroma flash uh, so you will be better off with this version uh, on with the camera chroma flash than with the other uh, applications where the flash just messes up the photo so that is available and that does work out really nicely it does also have the google camera and uh, it just first closed and yeah the notification the uh, privacy manager notification is working rather than the elongated one where you can't see anything it is there so yeah let me show you guys the uh, boot animation which is pretty cool so here is the boot animation which is basically the sanity mod boot animation ever since i guess five lollipop there hasn't been many changes in the boot animation so so yeah i guess that much is it about this rom then um well again in conclusion i just want to tell you guys that uh this is a beta rom and this is more of a beta rom than the uh 7.0 roms which are available right now there are hiccups in the uh performance sector uh let me just show you guys enter the benchmark score which is about 149,000, i believe yeah 149,000. uh closer to 150 
which is better than a stock ROM, which is about 145, 143, uh, but still not as good as the 7.1, uh, 7.01, which I got with the AICP, which is about 155,000, which is still the highest score which I received on this device. So, yeah, just so you guys know. So in conclusion, again, this is a beta ROM and you have to keep in mind that this is a beta ROM, but still, if you don't mind the occasional stutters here and there, the navigation problems uh, and mild problems, there are issues with uh, calls, uh, the volume is really really low with calls, but the Alistair works, so I do really like that. Gaming performance is nothing to ho uh, write home about, it's not as good as the 7.01 this is the first ROM so I am keeping that in mind uh, gaming performance is good you are able to play games but there are occasional freezes there are occasional post close issues but if you keep all that behind it is still a very good daily driver for a first release beta ROM I don't even know if, uh, if I can call this a beta ROM it might be might even be an alpha so yeah regarding that it's still a really great ROM so yeah, I guess that much is it about the ROM. Hope you guys like the video. Please share, subscribe, and like the video if you found it useful. See you guys next time. Bye.